<laughs> That's great. Um, yeah. Welcome everybody and welcome to my guests, Susan and Andy. Um, you know, they both have their own shows here on LM Virtual. Um, today's show is going to be focused on uh, Lesson 66, My Happiness and My Function Are One. But first, I'd like to ask Andy and Susan just a few little quick fire questions, just to give you a little flavor of the journey here into Living Miracles. And yeah, Susan, if you want to answer first, um, how long have you been actually studying A Course in Miracles? I picked it up in 2005. Okay, <laughs> do the math. Three <laughs> years. <laughs> Yeah, it's a few years. Okay, and yourself, Andy? Yeah, um, seven years, I think, yeah. Okay, so you were pretty young when you picked up the course. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Um, and how long have you been linked in with Living Miracles? Um, I would say 2013 on and off for a while, and then more consistently later, 2014. Mm -hmm. I think, or early 2015, kind of right around there. So whatever that is, four years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Five years? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I there? started watching David's videos probably in like 2013 or something. Mm -hmm. But actually LinkedIn, I wouldn't say until, I think my first gathering, I went to North Carolina with Nicholas and we saw David and Kirsten and some others in 2014. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I was just thinking about myself. It's about three years since I linked in and four years I've been avidly studying the course. Um, yeah. And how long have you been living as part of the community? Um, yeah, I think that was late 2014. Okay. <laughs> yeah it's one and a half years for me okay yeah. beautiful thank you so much yeah i'm just going to move straight into that just gives us a little flavor of the background and uh, i'm going to move into lesson 66 and i'm just going to read a little bit from the beginning of the lesson and then start to come into some of the questions around it um my happiness and my function are one. You have surely noticed an emphasis throughout our recent lessons on the connection between fulfilling your function and achieving happiness. This is because you do not really see the connection. Yet there is more than just a connection between them. They are the same. Their forms are different, but their content, their content is completely one. The ego does constant battle with the Holy Spirit on the fundamental question of what your function is. So, so does, does it do constant battle with the Holy Spirit about what your happiness is. It is not a two-way battle. The ego attacks and the Holy Spirit does not respond. He knows what your function is. He knows that it is your happiness and um yeah jesus goes on to say that we won't engage in arguments about what your function is or how to define your happiness but i was a little bit confused about what it actually meant um so i just wonder if you could just draw some light on that what what is he talking about what does he mean by your function here i don't know who wants to answer but Yeah, I think, I think he does say your function is your happiness, but then it's kind of like, okay, so where do I go with that? Like, what's the practical side of that? Because if I haven't been happy in my life, then obviously I'm not fulfilling my function. So it's like, okay, so I need to find out like how to fulfill my function. And uh, for me, I think that's just listening and following and following the Holy Spirit's guidance and the form of whatever the Holy Spirit has you do and say, like you never really know. 
and it could vary. And so it's never really about the form, but it's like when you're following the Holy Spirit's guidance and listening and following, then you're in alignment and then you're happy. So it's like, to me, I think that's what the function is. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Have you got anything to add to that, Susan? Um, yeah. The other part of it that I would say is just using everything for forgiveness. Um, that, yeah, listening and following and just staying in alignment with the spirit. What's your will for me? And, and just going in that direction is, is part of that. But also um, anything that does come up on the way is just handed over swiftly to the spirit and ask for another interpretation, the, spirit, the Holy Spirit's interpretation. And um, the more I, I'm in that flow of of the spirit, you could say, and, and letting the spirit come in and, and interpret what what seems to be in front of me, then the happier I feel because I'm not in my wrong mind. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not in, in the mind of what the ego would have me perceive and, and think about and analyze and so on. So it's more like, yeah. Um, yeah, so the function to me is just staying in that, in that flow, actually, with the spirit, in that alignment, and, and using everything that comes my way for forgiveness. And, and the more I can do that, then, then I can actually feel peaceful. I can feel happy. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Yeah. When I think about function, I think about, you know, like the projects that were, were given in community, you know, that's really helpful for stabilizing the mind. But what I'm thinking about is, you know, when you're, outside and your function's different it's going to be something in the world it might be a job or looking after children or cleaning cooking whatever it might be um so have you got anything to to offer somebody that's watching the show you know like about how they sort of stay in alignment with with holy spirit you know so that they can feel the joy and the happiness that's that's actually on offer here Yeah, I think it's like, if you really like what you're doing, like, let's say you have a job, and if you really like what you're doing, then you just keep practicing forgiveness um, while you seem to do these things that you enjoy, and then just staying open as well to that listening and following as you practice the forgiveness, and just, just really see, because um, I'm trying to think, like, Yeah. Yeah, I'm blanking out actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think just just following the guidance while you do what you enjoy, mm -hmm. and if you feel happy and you just keep feeling happier and happier, and your mind feels like it's expanding, then just keep going with that, and then just keep tuning in with the Holy Spirit if there is some kind of shift in form that needs to happen, and then go with that and mm -hmm. keep following the spirit from there but I, I would say like if you feel happy then you are in your function really because it says my happiness and my function are one so as long as you feel happy and you, you feel like it's becoming more and more consistent it's like keep it up like mm. you're fulfilling your function this feels good yeah yeah i think from that it's like okay the next question really leads on from that what if you're not happy in your work or you have a grievance with a colleague or a boss or anything um have you got any experience to share around that and how you use forgiveness for that yeah i, I had a lot of experience with that <laughs> I, would say, cause I remember before i came in community there was there was different things happening in my life and so what what I was doing was taking the course and just applying it and, and applying the lessons to as much as I could to what was happening on a day-to-day -day basis. And I, I recall, and I was telling you guys this yesterday when I was, I was in this um, PhD program before, uh, before coming into community. And I remember having this pretty steady conflict with my supervisor that just kept, was in my face all the time. And I just remember, you know, like, and I just want to be happy. Like, I just want to, I want to stay with the program and, but I want to resolve this conflict. And, uh, and so at that time I was in a lot of prayer and I was actually linked in, 
um, occasionally with, with, um, with a friend in Living Miracles. And I remember joining, joining with him around that. And I said, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like I, I keep, this keeps happening. I'm using, practicing forgiveness, but this keeps happening. And so, so joining with him, he had some ideas, some suggestions of opening up more with my supervisor and just sharing more what was on my heart. And, and it was actually really practical guidance. It was actually very mm-hmm. helpful. Yeah. Didn't solve everything. Like the, there was conflict that kept going for sure, but, but I felt like, um, yeah, that, that on this pathway, there's just been, um, there's just like a practice of deepening a prayer for, um, for wanting, wanting any events to be, or situations to be reinterpreted by the spirit. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there can be practical guidance and actual steps to take. And other times it's just to forgive whatever is showing up. So so in that particular example, it wasn't a, a drastic change in that moment, but it was just simply to, to reach out to a friend that I trusted and, and just talk, share all the thoughts and say, I, you know, I just want, I want to be happy and, you know, and to, and to pray together actually about what, mm-hmm. what, what is it, what is it, what's most helpful here in this situation. So, mm-hmm. and the spirit is always in the direction of what's more, most expansive, right? So yeah. So I could see that 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 was the gentle step. It was just mm-hmm. a, something something I could like a bite sized step I could take that that I felt I felt good about and I could do. So so those seems to be th- that seems to be one of the one of the directions that, that's happened for me a lot. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that's really practical. Um, yeah, and that kind of leads on to my next question again. So this is flowing. Um, yeah. What if you feel ready to move on then? You know, like um, say, you know, something keeps reoccurring or you, you can't actually find that happiness and it's like, okay, this might be the time to move on, leave a job, a family, a relationship, whatever it might be. Um, yeah, have you got any practical tools to, to share around, yeah, how you'd come to, to feeling, you know, yeah, yeah. It is time to move on, or it isn't even. Yeah, I think for me, I uh, I came to this point where I was working at this. Well, I was working at my own business, trying to go for my own goals, and then, and then eventually, I just gave up because I saw that my happiness was really with just my function, forgiveness, and I was giving every day to you know watching a lot of David's videos, practicing forgiveness, going to course groups. Um, my aunt's meditation group and then um one day what happened was after a period of all this like mind training and going to different groups one day I just had this feeling like I need to travel like I need to go somewhere and I I was like okay what is this about like I had no idea Mm -hmm. and then um but you know I was just following guidance those days and what happened was I just, I just really pray to the Holy Spirit, like, Holy Spirit, like, make it obvious, you know, and I love that prayer. It's like, make it obvious, Holy mm-hmm. Spirit. Yeah. And like, it will be obvious if you just pray that and you really have a desire to know what the guidance is. Mm-hmm. So what happened was I, I went to my aunt's meditation that I was going every Monday. And at the end of it, you know, you pick these angel cards, everyone picks an angel card. And I kind of prayed like, okay, Holy Spirit, like, um, I keep having this feeling that I need to go somewhere. I need to travel. Um, like, let me see a card that might help. And um, and then I picked the card and it said something like, you need to go. And just that, oh, like, wow. got to go. You need to go. Something like that. And I was Amazing. like, okay, thanks. Yeah. That's, that's pretty obvious, but I still don't know where. So then I was linking with David's videos a lot. So I checked the events for Living Miracles. And then I saw that there was a silent retreat at the monastery. And for some reason, I had this association in my mind that, you know, silent retreats are boring. And I never want to go to Utah because I don't like that state. You know, some kind of weird judgments and associations. So I was like, it must not be that, you know, I'm just like automatically trying to pretend like I knew what the guidance was. But I did notice that event. And so at an earlier point, I had sent in a question to Francis's show out of the blue at the time. And David was on that show and they answered the question. 
oh, and just to backtrack a little, I had talked to Nicholas about that event because even though I didn't feel like I wanted to go, I still joined with a mighty companion who was Nicholas. He was in community, I wasn't. Okay. And what he said was, oh, um, it's good that you bring up the event, but it's actually full. And I was like, okay, well, but, but he said, but we'll stay open. And then later that day, I was watching that show with Francis and they answered my question and it was really beautiful. And then after that, David was like, oh, and by the way, I think we can open up the silent retreat and have 20 more people show up. <laughs> oh, okay. like, oh, wow. Okay. This is pretty obvious. You know, there's that make it obvious prayer yeah. right there. Yeah. And so Nicholas messaged me right away. He's like, did you hear that? You know, we're all excited. And, and I was <laughs> like, okay, that must be it. It's like, and then I had to put my preferences aside, you know, silent retreat that's boring yeah how would i know i've never even been to one utah <laughs> it's like utah no that's a weird state how would i know i've never been to one. yeah it's like all these like weird preferences and judgments that don't even make any sense and have no validity at all but so yeah so it, it became obvious i bought a ticket it was like three days before the retreat started went to that retreat had one of the greatest experiences of my entire life which oh, that's probably yeah. for another time but it was just beautiful and that was all that was just taking the step step by step moment by moment guidance mm, yeah yeah it seemed really important that you joined with people you didn't just listen to what you thought you heard and yeah, yeah. and that started everything to move forward wonderful how about you susan is there anything you want to add there any yeah, I just really agree with the make it obvious prayer. <laughs> so, I've had a lot of that, but there's also been, you know, it's very, it's very individualized because I had, I was very wound, wound into the war, world in, in so many different ways that it's taken years actually uh, and lots and lots of steps um, and lots of forgiveness um, just to um, see here. Yeah, I mean, there was definitely a period of time where I was using the course and I thought I was such a good student and I was just practicing and practicing, but there was a feeling of flatness, like I wasn't going deeper. And once mm. I once I linked in with David and started to watch YouTubes and it was like something just shifted. And, um, and one day I, I just, I can't remember exactly the situation, but I, I, uh, yeah, I was with a friend over coffee and, and she mentioned David Hoffmeister's name and it something lit up in my mind because I, I had remembered that I had friended him on Facebook a few years before and I didn't know why. Okay. But something in that moment prompted me to actually reach out and just say hello. And then at the, t the same time I reached out to say hello, I discovered that an hour drive from my house, a new Living Miracles devotional center had just opened. Oh like you know and that's and, in canada yeah yeah in canada and so there were just certain signs at that time that i wasn't actually in the, at the t at the time i wasn't aware of i was actually kind of in denial i was like mm, yeah i was just kind of dismissing it's not important it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter you know i was just there's a lot of dismissal but it took it took a lot of work with the spirit to to just really help reel me in to getting to know what my calling was actually mm -hmm. is what it was because i Again, I was so, so caught up in different concepts of being a, a mother and a student and a wife and a daughter and I mean, all, a ton mm. of concepts. So, and that unwinding from concepts doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> so, so yeah, there's, you know, every, every time along the way where there's been, felt like a big decision point, um, having a, having a make it obvious mm. prayer is so helpful because then you can just sit back actually and watch okay i'll just i'll just let let the spirit come to me with the answer mm. so. yeah thank you thank you susan i'm just going to go back to um the reading um from the lesson and at number five um jesus says god gives me only happiness he has given my function to me Therefore, my function must be happiness. And then he moves on to look at the premises that's underneath um, the first two premises. And what's underneath the first one is that God can only offer love and cannot give anything else. 
And in the second premise, Jesus draws our attention to the two thought systems in the mind. We're choosing between the Holy Spirit and love or the ego, fear and guilt. Um, so my question around that is how does your function help you to stay aligned with the Holy Spirit's thought system? And have you got any examples perhaps around that? Yeah, I guess my function and form right now at this moment looks like I have a lot of computer projects. I always loved working on the computer. And so it's beautiful that the Holy Spirit's using these things that I love as part of my function. And um, I think it's like, you know, we lived our whole life in this ego getting zone, you know, ego state of mind where it's all about like get, get, get. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Spirit's all about giving. And so I think the function is really helpful because it shifts you from that getting that we're so used to, mm -hmm. to actually giving. Because especially, I guess, ours, our seeming situation right now is these projects that we're working on. It's like there's no personal rewards that we're getting, you know, mm -hmm. so it washes away any kind of um, ego getting kind of things because it's not like I'm going to get paid for doing this volunteer work or any kind of like trophy it's like yeah. no status <laughs> or recognition or status <laughs> or whatever medals whatever it's like there's none of that so it's perfect it's like okay great so now i can really do this just to give 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 and then while my mind's in that giving it's like it's automatically at a higher state of mind mm, yeah and um yeah it's just it really dissolves all these like meaningless ego thoughts that if you're in the getting, it's like, you're so used to, it's like all these getting thoughts, they just kind of dissolve. And then you're just with the Holy spirit in alignment. And then you can keep going through your function and just let the body be used like a puppet, whatever it's going to do, you know? And it's just, you just get raised higher and higher. And yeah, it's really helpful. Thank you. It's really helpful for me. I'm just taking all of this on board. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've had like countless of countless experiences, examples of being caught up in something in my mind of thinking like, like thinking I have these different problems that I had to deal with in, in, in my mind kind of thing. And, you know, we might call it spinning out or, or just ruminating over something or whatever. And then, Invariably, the spirit will come in with a phone call or with a text or something to say, no, 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 I want your mind somewhere else. And then these experiences, they're so dramatic of, of going from one state of mind that feels very heavy and, mm. and um, what's the word, like self-focused, you could say, to a focus that is right outside of that. And it's onto, it's onto that service feeling where, where it's, I'm giving of myself to something much bigger and I don't understand it. You know, I don't, I can't, I can't understand how it works even. I, I can just feel the difference. I can feel a, an uplift in my mind. And I get that over and over again. It, there's like a convincing job that the spirit has with us to, um, to say, yes, you're on track, basically. And then these shifts in perception, basically, where you can't, um, you know, you know, problems might melt away. In, in, a, in a heartbeat or mm -hmm. you know something uh, a solution might come in that we weren't expecting like out of nowhere or what have you but these experiences over and over where it just becomes so obvious that this has to be on track because yeah. nothing nothing feels feel as good it. as this mm -hmm. sort of feeling so yeah. so yeah um, yeah okay thank you yeah okay um back to the reading um and at number nine in the lesson jesus talks about the illusion of your function and asks us to honestly look at the many ways that we've tried to find salvation under the ego's guidance mm -hmm. and um yeah there's so many ways i can't possibly list them all but seeking through money through relationships, holidays in hot climates, sex, cars, status, education. I mean, the list just seems endless. Um, so I just feel we've got a few minutes left. We've got about five minutes that we can just pause here 
um, together. And yeah, just the question is, did we find peace or happiness in any of those ways? So if we can just pause and feel into that and um, yeah. Yeah. Did any of those attempts actually bring happiness? Thank you. And Andy, um, I know you had um, a sort of the American dream, if you like, of, you know, like um, the financial rewards and a very specific car that you wanted. And um, yeah, I just would like to ask you, you know, how that, that kind of dream within the dream faded away and... Um, yeah, you moved away from, from that idea. Yeah, I think one thing I did want to talk about, and we have three minutes left, but there <laughs> does seem to be this, like, you know, I think you said illusion of function. And it's almost like the ego thinks there's some kind of, like, personal salvation. And then the ego has its own form of function, which is whatever it thinks is going to get you to that personal salvation. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like I spent every minute of every day working on the computer, building all these skills to get to my personal salvation, which is insane now that I think about it, but it's to buy this Lamborghini Aventador. Like I always just, I don't know why, I just love that car. And at the time I was like, it's going to build up my self concept. You know, it's going to bring that personal salvation. It's mm. like some kind of crazy dream. And what I love about actual function, when you follow the Holy Spirit, it's like salvation is never personal. So when you're following the, when you're following the Holy Spirit and you, when you're in your function, it's like every single thing you're doing is for the entire universe. And it's for the whole dreamer, the dream to wake up. It's for everyone. It's for the whole, you know, it's not this personal salvation anymore. It's not just for myself to wake up. You yeah. know, it's for the son of God to wake up. It's, mm -hmm. it's much bigger than whatever these little ambitions and little goals that we had that never led anywhere. So it's much greater than that. So I think eventually I, I was, you know, I watched so many videos of this car and in the beginning it has this like magical feeling. It's like, Ooh, this could bring that salvation. But then it's like, I watch a 20 minute video of this guy, like giving a tour of the car, every single detail. The longer I watched that video, the worse I started to feel. So then it's like, okay, obviously this can't be my salvation. If I'm starting to feel worse, the more I put my focus on it. Like, it has to be that salvation is whatever I put my focus on. It just makes me happier and happier and brings me to greater and greater heights of happiness and mind expansion. That has to be what my function is. So it can't be that this must be an illusion of function, mm. illusion of salvation. Okay. Thank you. Well, that <laughs> we're at the last 30 seconds or so. So I just want to thank you both for, for lifting my mind up with, um, you know, your experience.